Yes, top of the moment to you. Anywhere where you watch us from, now lovely, bright, beautiful Saturday. Now you be, and I welcome you to yet another fantastic episode of uh, Health Matter. Health Matter and a program where they come your way every Saturday. What do they take and do? They take and discuss everything we get to do with health related issues. Uh, and as they say, now we know what they talk about now. We never see come out for ground, but we will pray say go come out for ground. Now that of COVID-19 pandemic. That is the one where they shake the whole world. So we never finish because the things have never go. And that is why Dr. Baklomio Ufegul, I'm the medical director for Great Valley, nine goody say up us chuck mouth to piece this matter on top COVID-19. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Chief. How are you doing, sir? I'm fine, thank you. How are the patients? If, uh, if if there be any. <laughs> they are. Uh -huh. Yeah, good morning viewers at home and around the world. We're back this morning to continue from where we stopped last week. We'll be looking at the topic we started some seven months ago. And today, we'll be doing a recap of some of the things we have said before now, and as well as bringing the latest in the world of medicine, talking about the latest discoveries with respect to the dynamics of transmission of COVID-19. What is new? What do we have to know? What do we have to do? I must also start by saying that COVID-19 started just like an epidemic in Wuhan, in China. But today, it has been declared some few months ago, a global pandemic. And as we speak, it stands as the greatest, the biggest public health challenge, public health crisis that is uh, disturbing and troubling the whole of humanity. Of course, it has gone around all, virtually all the countries of the world. And as we speak, it's still doing a whole lot of havoc. Just over the night, Nigeria recorded 575 new cases. And within this period, in the last 24 hours, we recorded what could best be described as our highest death, highest number of fatalities since COVID-19 started in a 24-hour period. 20 people, unfortunately, didn't survive. Mm. And of course, the story is not different in a number of countries of the world. On a global scale at the moment, the degree of affectation specifically is currently 12,631,067 persons or confirmed cases of COVID-19. Among this number, 562,000 889 individuals, unfortunately, didn't make it. Suffice also to say that 7.3 million, above 7.3 million individuals have equally recovered. Now, if we take it further down, U.S. at the moment still tops the chart. Currently, over 3.2 million individuals have been affected in the U.S., Brazil comes second with one point, over 1.8 million persons said to be affected by this COVID-19 contagion. And of course, after Brazil comes India. Before now, we were not much troubled in African continent, or so we felt, rightly or wrongly. But today I can tell you that things are no longer at ease. Is no longer what it used to be. As we speak, South Africa has jumped to number 11th on the global tally. South Africa currently sits on number 11th on the chart with 250,687 confirmed cases of COVID-19. They've gone above a number of countries, gone above China, gone above uh, Italy. And today, I also would like to point out that the reason why South Africa probably had gotten that far may be traceable 
to the number of tests they've been able to do. They've done over 2 million tests, laboratory tests, investigations. At the moment, our own country, Nigeria, is currently on number 49th on the global list, on the global tally, with 31,323 new uh, confirmed cases. Over the night, we saw 575 cases, and of course, 20 people, like I said before, couldn't make it. In terms of the number of tests that we have done so far, Nigeria has tested 175,656 individuals. That's some good effort that we have made as a country. I'm proud to be a Nigerian. Mm -hmm. And the credit must go to the people who are at the helm of, uh, 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 of affairs in the country. Talking about uh, PMB, of course, he did so well by setting up PTF. And of course, the members of PTF, ably led by the SGF of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, the health ministers, our colleague, our senior colleague at NCDC, a number of state governors are doing fantastically well. What you have mentioned is the Lagos State Governor, as well as the Honorable Commissioner of Health, Lagos State, who Abayone. recently celebrated his uh, birthday. I want to say happy birthday in Ariasa, if you're listening to us. Now, what have they been able to do? At the beginning of this pandemic, Nigeria only had about five laboratories that can independently test for COVID-19. But as we speak, at the federal level, we have about 40 molecular and gene expert uh, laboratories put together that have the capacity or the capability to test for COVID-19. Added to that is the fact that Lagos State recently enlisted about seven private laboratories to join the fray. And that accounts for the reason why we are measuring up. I must also say that we have gone past a number of African countries like Egypt in terms of the number of uh, uh, tests we've been able to do. We did a catch-up. And at, at the moment, I must admit that we are not doing badly at all. Now, that said, I want to do a recap of what COVID-19 is all about. What is coronavirus? Coronavirus is a large family of viruses. COVID-19 was the newest trend, the number seventh among the family of coronaviruses that was recently discovered. It predominantly affects human. Okay? Now, before COVID-19, we had some other, uh, a number of other uh, disease entities from the same family. Talking about SARS, severe acute respiratory syndrome, that emanated from China in the year 2002 and 2003. And of course, yes. Of, yes, Middle East respiratory syndrome that emanated from the Arabian Peninsula in 2012-2013, which, which, uh, 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 which today can, be still, uh, can still be found in a number of countries, but SARS has been eliminated from the world. Now, the coronavirus was named COVID-19 by WHO. It was declared public health emergency of international importance precisely on the 30th of January 2020. Major routes of transmission for COVID-19 are through, number one, respiratory droplets that can be released when one is talking or when one sneezes or coughs in an enclosed environment. The second route of transmission could be contaminated surfaces, surfaces that have been contaminated through infected respiratory uh, secretions from infected individuals that anybody could touch without knowing. If such a person ends up touching his eyes or her eyes, nose and mouth, the person can also end up infecting uh, himself or herself. But in the last couple of weeks, we have seen a number of debates concerning uh, the a number of debates uh, 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 with respect to whether COVID-19, whether people who are asymptomatic can transmit COVID-19 or not. I must also acknowledge that there have been a number of walkbacks from WHO on this topic 
To the extent that people are confused, not knowing what to believe again and what to follow. For the purpose of this presentation, we want to make it, we want to make it a lot clear to all individuals, to all Nigerians, to everybody that is watching us. As it stands, WHO has equally acknowledged that there are significant uh, volume of asymptomatic transmission. Uh, recently, uh, American CDC actually said that about half of the infected people in the U.S. are people who are, who are asymptomatic. Okay. Uh, Dr. Bart, let us hold you a bit there. So that we'll go on this chicken break. You know, as we take Duam, our extreme viewers, once we come back, we go open phone lines, and I go feel calling, the Skype, they're available for you, so also call through yeah, so with our Skype ID, we'll be WAP TV, so that we'll go fit see you. As you, they see us, then uh, Dr. Bart will get to see, this time around, the impatient, yes, <laughs> in <so>. quotes. <laughs> yes, yeah, so on top much. of that, let yeah. us quickly go on this break. We will be right back. Go nowhere. Health Matter will be right back. Health Matter is a serious matter. Oh. That now why we they always get Dr. Bart Ufebuna every Saturday to come teach us and enlighten us on top with Health Matter. You fit to interact with us on top of the show or talk to the doctor through we phone numbers will be 081-7314-7589 and 081-054-34984. You see if you call us on top with Skype ID will be WAP TV. You fit also advertise your products and services on top we show where they help let people. Terms and conditions apply, Shao. Hi, I wanted to ask about the New York Times report previewing an open letter to be published by 239 scientists from around the world calling for the WHO to give greater acknowledgement to the risk of an airborne spread of COVID-19. Um, first of all, I wanted to get your reaction to those reports and to see what where WHO's research stands in terms of what um, where we are. Thank you for your question. Uh, so we have discussed and collaborated uh, with many of the signatories of uh, the articles uh, that you have uh, mentioned over the last few months. Uh, and indeed, uh, we discussed the available evidence that has been discussed in these pieces. And also, uh, we received uh, contributions from uh, many of, of the signatories of these pieces. Um, we acknowledge that uh, there is uh, emerging evidence in this field, as in all other fields, regarding the COVID-19 uh, virus and, and pandemic. Um, and therefore, uh, we believe that we have to be open uh, to this evidence and understand its implications regarding the modes of transmission and also regarding the precautions uh, that uh, uh, need to be taken. Um, thank you, Benedetta. Just to say that, yes, um, you know, we have been engaged with this group since April uh, when they first wrote to us on April 1st. Um, and we've had an active engagement with them and with many of the signatories on this through, through different networks. Um, and as uh, uh, we have said previously, we welcome the interaction from scientists all over the world from many different disciplines. Um, many of the signatories are engineers, uh, which is a wonderful area of expertise, which, which adds to growing knowledge about the importance of ventilation, which we feel also is, is very important. Um, we have been talking about the possibility of, of airborne transmission and aerosol transmission as one of the modes of, of transmission of um, COVID-19, um, as well as droplet. We've looked at fomites, we look at fecal oral, we look at mother to child, we look at animal to human, of course, as well. And so we are, are producing um, a scientific brief on summarizing where we are. We've been working on this for several weeks now, uh, and we've engaged with a large number of groups, um, epidemiologists and clinicians, IPC specialists, engineers, mathematical modelers, to try to consolidate the growing knowledge around, around transmission. Um, but we have uh, spoken about the, the importance of all of the different potential modes of transmission. Um, this is a respiratory pathogen, um, and so it is important that what we know fits into the guidance that we have, which is why a comprehensive package of interventions are required to be able to stop transmission. 
This includes not only um, physical distancing, it includes the use of masks where appropriate in certain settings, specifically where you can't do physical distancing, um, and especially for healthcare workers. So our focus on, on the use of masks, of course, is for healthcare workers um, and to use airborne precautions where you have those aerosol generating procedures. But we're also looking at the possible role of airborne transmission in other settings where you have particularly closed settings where you have poor ventilation. So uh, we will be issuing our brief in, in the coming days um, and that will outline everything that we have in this area. Okay, you're welcome back to the show. You've seen the video and you've heard. So uh, far from waiting that, uh, we'll go, go on top, um, on top uh, the COVID-19 team they talk about. Uh, I'm talking about the woman who says she said she did lead one of the uh, courses to make sure, say, COVID-19, uh, they eradicated COP, whichever word you want to use for the human race. You've seen so far, you even talk to uh, <laughs> It is said, be like say uh, they, they even look at them vis a vis uh, airborne. Uh, say this still uh, get to do it airborne again. So on top of that, uh, phone lines will definitely be opened now. You can see our phone lines on your screen, vis a vis our uh, Skype ID that is WAP TV. Where if you reach us, call us through the Skype, and uh, we're gonna see you just as you gonna see us uh, as you they see us. So no go be a juro, go see you. Say go see us. Then you can fit uh, as a doctor. Any question on top things where they do your mind in Yaga Yaga. So on top of that, the phone lines are open. Please turn down the volume on your TV set. But, but uh, doctor, before we go on that break, you did try, uh, you did talk about asymptom the asymptomatic and the yes, symptomatic side. Yes, it's important we talk about the dynamics of transmission with respect to the newly discovered uh, transmission mode. So we now know that's WHO there admitting that COVID-19, yes, can be airborne. Of course, that reinforces the fact that each and every one of us needs to take a personal responsibility to ensure that we wear our face mask anytime we are in public spaces. It's important we do so. Alongside other, uh, not just putting on face masks, maintaining social and physical distancing, washing our hands for 20 seconds at least under running water, and maintaining good respiratory hygiene as well. Now, with respect to the dynamics of transmission, yes, uh, we saw a number of videos. Some of us may have come in contact with a number of videos that we that were circulating uh, on social media lately, where WHO said that asymptomatic transmission was a rarity. Let's okay, take this Abdul call. Sadiq. Good morning, Abdul Sadiq. Yeah, hello, good morning. How yeah. Gombe this morning? Yeah, we are all fine. It's a regular caller from Gombe. Okay, thank, thank you very, very much, much Sadiq. Doctor is here. Go ahead with your question. Yeah, I welcome the doctor to the studio. Please, doctor, thank you for enlightening and educating the good people of Nigeria. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, my question today is, uh, how? what are the steps that a person can take to boost uh, his immune system so that uh, to avoid being a symptomatic carrier? Thank you very much. Thank yes, you very we much. We all yes. agree that uh, we are in a uh, dangerous stage. That is uh, community transmission. Yes. So we cannot avoid it. So we need to learn how to live with the virus. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Have a nice day. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much for Lovely that wonderful question. question. Yes. Now, the steps that we need to, uh, to take uh, to um, maintain our immunity or to make our immunity as robust enough as possible, because if you have a robust immunity, You'll be able to, your system will be able to ward off some of those infections, not just COVID-19 alone. Number one is hygiene. Very, very important. Okay? Number two is the fact that you need to take care of, your, you need to take care of yourself in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of the fact that you need to go to hospital to do a health check. Now, why is it important? Because some of these uh, disease entities, some of them, can present with no symptoms. A good example is hypertension. That's why it is today called a silent killer. A number of people who are hypertensive may not even know that they are hypertensive until probably they get to a hospital to have their BP checked. Okay, so it's important. Apart from that, we also need to... Sorry, sorry sir. For somebody who is up to uh, 20 years and above, like how many times do you advise he or she should get his BP checked in a month, at least on a monthly basis now. 
it, it, it doesn't have to do with age, though. But we know that some of these uh, disease conditions are commoner in the elderly age group. Now, but for somebody in that age category that you cited, suffice also to say that BP can be measured in children as sure. well. Okay, in some uh, in some uh, situations, medical situations. Okay, depending on what the doctor is looking at. But it's advisable that one should have his BP, his or her BP checked at least once a month. At that least. should be like two half times in a year. Okay, so you need to ensure that you eat healthy diet, balanced diet, very important. You need to ensure that you maintain good uh, uh, sanitation in and around your, your environment, your house, your office, and wherever. You also need, having done all of this, the number of uh, uh, multivitamins that are today known to be helpful to boost one's immunity, okay? A number of them, vitamin C, zinc, vitamin D. Vitamin D will have plenty of fit in our environment in that you can just get that by just standing out in the, morning, in the early morning sun. Okay, so you can get that. We have abundance of that in our environment. Thank you very much. These are, and a number of other steps are what we need to do to help boost our immunity, especially at this time. Most importantly is the fact that you need to know your status. You need to know your health status. Very important. Keeping in mind that some of these disease conditions may present without any form of symptoms. So back to the, uh, the cases we are looking at. Symptomatic transmission, pre-symptomatic transmission, and asymptomatic transmission. Now we, are, we have been told that COVID-19 can equally be airborne. Now let me start with the first one. Symptomatic transmission, what that means is that someone who is infected is manifesting some set of symptoms. In COVID-19, the major symptoms are Number one, dry cough, fever, difficulty in breathing, and a number of others, okay? Pre-symptomatic, in a situation where you have an infected individual, for some few days of getting infected, the person shows no symptoms. After some days, the symptoms will start manifesting. Those are the category that we refer to as pre-symptomatic. Now for the asymptomatic, these are people who are infected, but they will show no form of symptoms at all. And that is what the debate, that it is on this topic that the debate has lasted for some few weeks now, because WHO uh, 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 staff actually said that it was a reality. But with the current information, imagine evidence in the scientific community, about half of Americans who are infected belong to this category. They are asymptomatic. What that means is that Somebody could be standing around you, could be sitting around you in an office or in any other place, and the person might be infected without your knowledge. Okay, if such a person sneezes or talks around you, there are a possibility that the droplets that are coming from him can be very infectious. And what betide you if you're not putting on face masks and if you're not maintaining social distancing? Distance of at least two meters or six feet, if you like. Well, so it's important we understand these dynamics. Added to that is the fact that we have been told that this infection can be airborne. Let me create a scenario so that we can understand it a lot more clearer. Somebody who is infected could step into a lift, sneeze or probably cough and leaves that vicinity. 15, 20 minutes after, another individual, another innocent person could step into such an environment and can actually pick it from the infected droplets or secretions that the former person who, left the, uh, who apparently left the lift had actually released before leaving that environment. But, but, but sir, I, I took my time and I, I listened to a lot of literatures from American researchers on this uh, COVID-19 vis-a-vis the number of minutes or seconds that this virus can last in the air. I don't know, but I stand to be corrected, which we would like to learn from you. Is there no particular duration? Because some people will tell you it cannot last for more than, some researchers will tell you it can't last for more than 90 seconds before it dies in the air. Some can tell you it cannot even sustain in some degree of weather. Some will tell you it cannot last for more than a minute. But now, sir, so you're saying 15, 20 minutes. Does it yes. have that now, when, you, when you're saying, uh, uh, before now, what we were used to, is that when somebody releases, when somebody, an infected individual do, coughs and sneezes, he ends up releasing some respiratory droplets that gets aerosolized 
in the air. A, a good number of them that are heavy will fall almost immediately. Some can linger on in the air for some few seconds to maybe minutes. Okay. okay but that, that was the previous position before now. But what they are saying that it can linger on for a lot more than that. Wow. For up to 20 to 30 minutes. Wow. Okay, so that is why the airborne transmission is coming into the picture. And I want to say that WHO did not just key into it. Usually for WHO to adopt any uh, hypothesis, it must be as a result of uh, robust and elaborate scientific investigation and findings coming from preponderance of data or information that other, scienti other scientific uh, 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 community may have put forward to them. So it's done in collaboration. It's not a WHO affair only. You can see the report that we, uh, the video that we saw that it, uh, over 200 scientists were putting mounting pressure on them to look at this topic once more. Okay, it was as a result of that that WHO that has come to acknowledge that yes, this problem can be airborne. Also, I also want to point out that over the week too, though these discoveries uh, did not just happen today, it, came up, it also came up that certain types of blood group can actually increase one's vulnerability to picking up COVID infection. Okay, now people who have a blood group type A can actually be at a higher risk of picking this infection than someone who may have blood group O, I will explain. Now, there are about eight uh, types of blood groups. There are about eight different types of blood groups. You have group, group A, you have B, and then you have AB, and then you have O. Now, the blood groups are usually patterned, are, are named with respect to the antigen that can be found on, at the, on the surface of the red blood cells. So those people whose red blood cells we have antigen A, we have blood group A. Those individuals whose, uh, who, whose uh, surfaces of red blood cells we possess antigen B will have blood group B. Now, those people that may have both, those people that may possess the two on the surface, surfaces of their red blood cells, antigen A and B, will have blood group A and B. People who will have neither of the A or B, no antigen, will have blood group O. Now you have four groups with that. Now, there's also the resource factor arrangement that comes in. Now, these other four groups can either be resource, resource positive or resource negative. That will give you additional four groups. So put together, you have eight different blood groups. So the scientific community, based on a study that was published in a, uh, uh, that a medical journal recently, but before that publication that came from a, a New England medical journal, Similar studies were carried out in China and Colombia, and they actually came out with similar findings concerning this blood group. So essentially, people who have blood group A may be a lot more predisposed to getting infected with severe disease than someone who has blood group O. So the one that has the least of uh, uh, possibility of getting infected are people that have blood group O. Now, the question will arise, Will you not say because I'm, I belong to social and so blood group, I, I shouldn't take measures to protect myself? The answer is no. Okay, so you still need to put in place those measures of prevention, IPC, uh, infection prevention and control measures that we always talk about. It's important we do so. Thank okay. you very much. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Um, let us move on by looking into the issue of testing. Testing in the sense that over the week we took in the news Excuse me, we take them for the news, say, locally made kits for Nigeria. They inside one of the uh, daily newspapers, say, one of, uh, say locally made kits, uh, don't they shell it for Nigeria? I don't know, maybe you come across any news like that in order to feel to rise up to this challenge of testing in Nigeria. So I want you to briefly talk about testing, testing kits, and so far, how many have we been able to test as far as the country is concerned, vis-a-vis -vis what is even the uh, situation in terms of uh, individual states. I mean, statistics now, in individual states for now as we speak. Okay. Um, in terms of testing, so far, Nigeria has tested 175,656 persons. 
since this pandemic started. And that's, I must give Nigeria a pass mark for that. It's no mean feat. Now, considering what it takes to test an individual, okay, but we still know that it's still a drop in the ocean, sure. considering the population that we are looking at. Because if you look at all the African countries, I try to look at the, the uh, compare all the African countries together, and I discovered that, of course, Nigeria is the most populous country country in, in Africa, that is not without any form of doubt. Now, there are a number of other countries too that have uh, quite uh, large populations like Nigeria. Ethiopia has over 115 million people and so far they've tested about 250,604 individuals. Okay, so a number of African countries with larger population are actually doing, uh, I, I don't want to use the word better. They are doing also fantastically well. Okay, so it's an encouragement. Now, talking about different test kits, and, and then with respect to uh, individual states, for now, Lagos State appears to be the only state that has tested much more than every other state. And oh. that can, uh, can be understood because in Nigeria, Lagos... Lagos State remains the epicenter of Corona of COVID-19 pandemic in Nigeria. A number of other, other states, too, have acquired the capacity to test. I think virtually, I think it should be about two more states of the Federation that currently do not have the capacity to test for COVID-19. A good number of states equally have some private labs that, are, that have started testing for COVID-19. Now, talking about the discovery that Nigeria, uh, that was made in Nigeria concerning the test kit, Information on that is still sketchy. Hopefully by next week, we'll be able to give a much detailed information along that line. But I must also point out that apart from uh, a number of researches are currently going on in Nigeria. Of course, Nigeria, about five states in Nigeria are currently participating in the uh, Solidarity uh, Drug Trial, WHO-sponsored Solidarity Drug Trial. A number of other research researches, be it on... Uh, Drugs, testing are equal, equally going on in Nigeria. So, in the next coming months to years, we may be able to reap the fruit of our, the fruits of our labor as a country. So, okay. we are not lagging behind. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, and uh, Doctor Baji, don't yes. So we talk. Say we are not doing badly, even though we still drop in an ocean. It don't take time to talk about our blood group plus every other thing that surrounds COVID-19. Let's go on this chickeny break. We will be right back. Where Dr. Bart could see the pieces matter. Go nowhere. Hello. Today I'd like to talk to you about how to wear non-medical mask, also known as fabric mask. Fabric masks can be used by the general public in areas where there are many people infected with COVID-19 in the community and physical distancing of at least one meter cannot be achieved. There are a wide variety of fabric masks that can be handmade or purchased in a store. They act as a barrier so that you can protect those around you. They should ideally be made of three layers of fabric. The outer layer should be a water resistant fabric. The inner layer should be water absorbent and the mid layer acts as a filter. First, clean your hands with alcohol based hand rub or soap and water. Pick up your clean mask and inspect it. If it is damaged or dirty, do not wear it. Place the mask on your face, covering your nose, mouth, and chin, making sure there are no gaps between your face and the mask. Do not touch the mask while wearing it to avoid contamination. If you accidentally do, clean your hands. Before touching the mask, clean your hands with alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. 
As you remove the mask, lean forward slightly and remove the loops from behind the ears without touching the front of the mask. And don't forget, wash your hands after taking off the mask. Make sure that you have your own mask and do not share it with anyone. If your fabric mask is not soiled or wet and you need to reuse it, you can store it in a clean plastic resealable bag such as this one. However, if it is dirty, do not use it. Wash it with soap and water, preferably at high temperatures after each day of use. Remember, a mask alone cannot protect you from COVID-19. It must be combined with protective measures, including maintaining at least one meter distance from others and washing your hands frequently. Stay safe and help prevent the spread of COVID-19. Medical masks should be worn by health workers and those caring for someone with COVID-19 symptoms, persons aged 60 and over, and anyone with pre-existing medical conditions as they are at greater risk of developing serious illness and people who have symptoms suggestive of COVID-19. Before touching the mask, clean your hands with alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. Inspect the mask for tears or holes. Do not use a mask that has previously been worn or is damaged. Verify which side is the top. This is usually where the metal strip is. Identify the inside of the mask, which is usually the white side. Place the mask on your face, covering your nose, mouth, and chin, making sure there are no gaps between your face and the mask. Pinch the metal strip so that it molds to the shape of your nose. Remember, do not touch the front of the mask while using it to avoid contamination. If you accidentally touch it, clean your hands. Now, how do you take off a medical mask? Before touching the mask, once again, ensure that you clean your hands with alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. Remove the straps from behind the head or ears without touching the front of the mask. As you remove the mask, lean forward and pull the mask away from your face. Medical masks are for single use only. Discard the mask immediately, preferably into a closed bin. Clean your hands after touching the mask. Always be aware of the condition of the mask. Replace it if it gets soiled or damp. A mask alone cannot protect you from COVID-19. It must be combined with other measures, including maintaining at least one meter distance from each other, washing your hands frequently, and avoid touching your eyes, mouth, and nose while wearing a mask. Stay safe and help prevent the spread of COVID-19. Yes, you're welcome back to the show. And you don't hear from April Bola. Yes, the woman who says she desensitizes us on top uh, the kind uh, nose mask uh, to wear. And what is supposed to even be like in terms of texture, in terms of uh, how it is being made. Yes, before we went on that break, uh, we did talk about testing vis a vis those states where they lead in terms of testing capacity. Dr. Bad made us realize, say, they got state, they do creditably well. Vis a vis some other states, why in toxic for Bodo Nigeria? Maybe now one tabi two states, very now I never fit a uh, test for now. But all things being equal, you say we are not doing badly at all. I'll still allow Dr. Bart uh, to hint us more about uh, statistics that has for each state. Vis a vis, the phone lines are open. You fit also contribute. Tabi make you call us through uh, Skype. We are uh, Skype ID in our web TV so that you yourself could feel contribute this time around. Visually, make they see you. Uh, like the president, they do their meeting now, and uh, visual now, they, they see themselves uh, yes, through sir. screen. Make they see you, make yourself 
this year. So, okay, Dr. Bart, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you very much. Now, um, I want to uh, look at uh, the general fact sheets that we have from data as at 9th of July 2020, courtesy of NCDC. Okay? Lagos State confirmed cases cumulatively stands today at, as of that time, 11,827. Okay? Next to Lagos State is FCT. And of course, or your state comes third, and the do state is in the mix too. Delta State, Kano, and Rivers as well. Now, I want to look at the total active cases we have in some of these states. For instance, at the moment, Lagos State has, with respect to this date, 9th of July, though, Lagos State had at this time 9,993 active cases. Now, these are people who are believed to be battling with infection at this material time. Okay? Now, apart from wh what you do to get active cases is when you subtract the number of people that have died, the number of people that have, that have been able to recover, and the number of cases that were transferred to some other states for one reason or the other, the ones that are left behind are called the active cases. I think we have... Uh, um, a model that will be shown to us shortly that has to do with that of Lagos. Now, the number of states at the moment that do not have an active case, what, what that means is that they've been able to manage those people that were admitted. But that is not to say that, that, is, no. that there is no COVID-19 in, in some states. of those states. Uh -huh. We should not make that mistake. We have COVID-19 going by what the NCDC Director General has said recently, that there is that's COVID-19 in all Nigerian states. There is no one state that does not have COVID-19. However... Some have been able to manage. Yes, the difference is that a good number of states presently don't have the capacity or capability to test as much as some other states are doing. That can account for the reason why they may have fewer number of cases. Just okay. about some few days ago, Anambra State, for instance, recorded... Uh, about 20 cases in one day. And people were asking questions. Why was it so? Anambra used to have some few cases, seven, eight, nine. All of a sudden, they recorded 20 new cases. I think because they jack up their testing capacity. Exactly. Exactly. And then somebody, yes, we have that for Lagos State. So, that's as of, as of this date. So, you can see the number. As of 6th of July, 2020. Yes. They said we have 602 tests uh, conducted with one, two, three new cases. That's 123 new cases confirmed. Uh, wow. 20.43% 20 20 positivity rates. 20.43. We won't even say we are not doing badly because that's the, it's, it's that, that, relative that, to how much we have been able to test. That positivity rate, I must admit, is quite high because I remember... Yesterday, when I was watching the, uh, the proceedings from U.S., Florida, for instance, was said to have about 28% positivity rate, and that is quite high. Okay? What that means is that the number of people, if you test 100 individuals, yeah. out of 100, you have at least 20 people okay, that will test positive. For every 100 individuals you have tested, you have at least 20 people. If you have 20, 28 positivity rate, it, says, it means for every 100 individuals you have tested, you have at least 28 yeah, but, 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 persons who but, could test positive. But I wouldn't want us to liken this to that of Florida in the sense that Florida's, uh, Florida's uh, data, you and me know, say, if they're accurate in the sense that them don't test. But we now, we never even test. That is, this positivity rate you are looking at, 20 to 100, is based on the assumption of the tested, which means it Reported could be bad. Cases. It could be worse. Yes. If in reality, in reality, uh, if the hundred are tested. Uh, but what can we do? We 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 have to work with the number of reported cases. I must also admit that even in the U.S., yes, we say in Nigeria that the numbers that we are currently reporting, obviously, with ongoing community transmission, there is no doubt that we actually will have a lot more that are unreported. Okay, let's take Sylvester from Abuja. Good morning, Sylvester. Sylvester, good morning. I got Sylvester, you did there. Okay, we have to take you 
uh, out of the line so that uh, another caller go free enter. Okay, sir. So we they talk about the rate, the, 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 the possibility of testing vis-a-vis -vis the percentage. Yes, there is no doubt that the more we test, the more we will discover. Sure. It's a fact. Sure. It's also true for a number of countries, like in the U.S., at the time they were actually uh, some uh, scientific community members were actually saying that the, the number of cases in U.S. are by far more than what they have been able to report so far. So it is like that globally. Okay, so no one country, except maybe uh, China and some other Asian countries, of course, China has tested more than 90 million people. And you can, you can understand why it is so. They had a number of uh, infrastructures, health infrastructures in place. As a result of the number of challenges that they've dealt with in some years past, they dealt with SARS, they dealt with a number of other coronaviruses, so they're used to it. Asian countries, for instance, these face masks that are somehow strange to us, they've started wearing it decades ago. Okay, so for them, it's not, it's part of their way of life now. But we're having difficulties trying to adjust to this new development, to adjust to this new normal. New order. Yes. And I also would like to point out that I want to beg everybody that is listening to us today. Yes, the government is trying to strike and maintain a balance between maintaining our sources of livelihood and keeping us safe. And that is why they are trying to ease the lockdown. They are trying to open up all spaces so that life can return to normal. Okay, but that said, it behoves on us as individuals to now take charge, to take responsibility. Of course, you don't need to be reminded to wear your face mask. Of course. Yes, the. Uh, I, 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 I will pause you there, Dr. Bart, to speak on two things. One, okay. uh, the issue of hand glove for the elderly. I've seen some elderly ones going as far as wearing hand gloves. I would want you to uh, comment on this. Yes, I like it, and I want you to also react. Dan, Dan, good morning. Kogi. Hello, Dan, good, good morning. morning. Yeah, good morning, sir. Yeah, please yeah. go ahead with your question. Yeah, uh, doctor, um, with this, um, I watched the video that I played before, um, saying that the virus is airborne. So I wanted to know, I last week, a friend of mine came around, and he, he was not putting on his face mask. So I was asking him, guy, half an hour, wear your face mask. You just walk around, you know, carry mask for face and all that. And he was like, forget that thing, you know, real and all that. But now, in this video, these people are acknowledging that the, the virus is even airborne. Uh, my question is just, how uh, how safe are we like this now? With this new development now? This world was zero. <laughs> my, my brother, your, your fears and concerns are well placed. Thank you for that question. Your fears are concerned. Shortly before we came on air, we were equally discussing it among ourselves. And I was just saying that we might, be, we might start seeing, uh, with respect to this new discovery, we might start seeing a lot of changes. The so-called uh, social distancing of uh, two meters, six feet, may have to be extended much longer. Now, the world may have to start readjusting to this emerging new information, okay? A lot, so, but overall, it, 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 it reinforces the need for each and every one of us to take personal responsibility. I won't stop saying that. By ensuring that we wear our face mask, our face clothes, anytime we're in the public space. What do you think of the hand gloves? The hand gloves. Uh, now, I, I will tell you, there are some situations that will warrant people to use hand gloves. Okay? Uh, I was listening to... Um, the, some of the preparation and measures that have been put in place in our airports. They said people who handle luggages are allowed to wear some gloves, hand gloves. Now, you discover that some, some kind of job will not give you the room to wash your hand after handling each luggage. Yeah. So for such set of people, it's understandable if you see them putting on gloves because they have to walk probably at a faster rate, handle a number of luggages. But at the end of the day, it still boils down to the fact that it is better for you to have your hands washed or sanitized than to wear hand gloves and be moving from one place to the other. Except if your job demands, you do a specific job that probably demands you wear hand gloves in some areas. Dr. Bart, we go to the market, we buy food items, we buy fruits, veggies and everything. Where the sellers don't wear all these things and possibly they sneeze into the air and we bring our ugu home or our igusi home 
and we cook them. In the process of the cooking, are we safe or these things still strive on fire? Are we totally doomed? No, 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 it's not, it's not all doom and gloom. Why asking this question? I just remembered I saw a picture of a supermarket where uh, some food items were displayed. And then behind those food items was an inscription, was a sign. Please do not handle. Ask for assistance. Just in case you want to turn the purple to see the other side, whether it is ripe or not. You want to see the banana and you handle it and you drop it back. Okay? That should not be allowed anymore. Sometimes we we'll, we'll see these things in our environment. Yes, we are, we are in the season. from the guys who push yes, with we're the truck. Yes, we are in the season where we we'll have uh, uh, corn sellers doing their corn stuff. In the, okay, uh, 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 usually, sometimes if you probably stop at such a corn joint, you will discover that some individuals will come. Madam, let me take this song. But yeah, they grab another one. Yeah. They will end up touching more than 10. Sure. And then picking only one at the end of the day. We should frown. We should discourage practices Such like practice, that. Yeah. Not in this era anymore. Yes, we were doing it and getting away, but I don't think it is anymore. Okay, Said, if you be our last caller for today, so nah. be it. Said, good morning. Well, good morning. How are you doing, Said? I'm fine. Okay, go ahead with your question. The doctor is here. Um, I'm actually watching your program now. Thank you. And uh, there is something that is confusing me. Uh, uh, last Friday, Friday last week, I have a problem. I was and I was taken to to police station. I was taken to say I discovered that there is no social distance there. Almost about sixty something people in one cell, and they'll be bringing people without even testing them. Oh. Thank you very much, Said. This is a big one. What do you have to say, Doctor? <laughs> Cell. <laughs> Inmates. I don't know. You I have know. to know. You I, must know. I don't know. Because well, I, you must know because because uh, there is there is there is there is, there is, I, there is I, the political I, aspect of medicine. <laughs> there is the economic aspect of medicine. She, you had the lady when she was talking about the mathematical aspect yes, of COVID nineteen, yes, yes. calculating mm -hmm. how long this thing can so. so what is the political view of medicine towards this COVID-19? It's not just the police station. It's not just the police station. We know that uh, a lot of people have been clamoring for prison reforms, uh, reforms in our justice system and all whatnot. But I think government has the prerogative to take decisions along that line. I will tell you that a number of countries have had to pardon some inmates to decongest the prison because... Before long, you will discover that some of these places, some of our prisons will start serving as uh, clusters of our community transmission. Okay, okay, so we need to take a holistic, a second look at what is going on there. Just like what he painted, none of us will shy away from the fact that we know that these things are with us. These things exist. We can't run away from it. Our prisons are jam-packed. Our detention centers in some of the police stations are jam-packed. Not too many of them have been able to put in place uh, hand washing uh, structures and then some other social distancing measures. But I think it's what uh, got, it's worth looking at. It's worth looking at, especially the PTF. That should be a good question for them as well. Well, that's a very good question that mm. everybody should look into, both government authorities and every other person. We'll be stakeholder where they watch WAP TV now. On top of that, we want to say a very big thank you to Nawu Nadi. Always stay tuned. I believe you have a wonderful moment with us. If truly you do have a wonderful moment, why not join us the same time next Saturday, yes, so. 8.30 to 9.30, where Dr. Bartholomew Ufegbola is going to take us through another new, that is a groundbreaking trend on COVID-19. But before that time, stay safe. Bye. Thank you for staying with us.